Alex, how are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm well. <laughs> um, well, I'm just checking in because it's coming up to about a year since we first spoke. Um, I remember hearing you speak in Salford at a conference about universal basic income and then we ended up doing an interview about it for Political. and unbeknownst to me you're about to release the New Zealand project so timing was pretty good <laughs> um, but it's obviously been a really big year for you since that point so I guess I just wanted to hear from you about like how you felt about the book's release and just the, the things that have eventuated since it came out. Yeah um... Yeah, it's been um, yeah really fun last year, and I'm still you know living in the UK. And so one of the nice things about the last year has I've been getting the chance to go back to New Zealand for um, a few things around the book. Um, yeah, so I ended up doing uh, four trips back to New Zealand last year, um, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of travel. Um, to, too much flying um but um yeah no it was um it was really heartening um i think um i, I didn't really know what to expect um from, from writing the book and was really open to um sort of uh the book not really um catching on um and uh there were yeah lots of people interested in the ideas who were keen for me to to give talks in different places and yeah so i guess the um uh, I did a talk at the Auckland Writers Festival and then um, I did a, a big um, series of talks around the country in July and August. We mm -hmm. um, went to about, um, t uh, did about 25 talks over um, five weeks or so, which was, was really intense, but um, really fun. Um, and yeah, there's been lots of really interesting conversations and relationships that have come out of especially that, that trip around. Yeah. Um, and did you find, uh, I guess it, from what I could see on the internet, um, there, was, there was a mixed response. A lot of what I saw was really positive. There was some critique, which I guess is, as, a, as an academic, maybe welcome is the wrong word, but kind of, I guess that's a compliment in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what were some of the strongest, uh, well, let's start with the negatives. What were, what were some of the critiques that you felt resounded with you and kind of pushed you to think, uh, in different ways about what you've written about. Yeah, um, yeah, there was a, a good critical response, and um, I think it was like a, a credit to um, critical culture in New Zealand um, that people kind of um, picked over the argument in different ways. Um, one early critique was um, from Daniel McLaughlin in the spin-off, and he made different points, but I think the point that um, I thought was was a useful one was. Um, you've talked about values and the importance of values of care and community and creativity. How do we um, move to, to realize those values? Um, and um, I, I think there's a fair question there about um, how much work I should have done in laying out a kind of program of change for, for making those values a reality. So that was an interesting question that I definitely sat with and um, had, had views on. Um, there was another sort of response early on about how um, uh, people had talked about values before and I was really in agreement with that and didn't, didn't really want to claim that this was a, a new oh, approach. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but the, but the a really interesting angle on that was, was this, this idea that um, as, a, as a Pākehā male writer, um, working out of Oxford, maybe I got more coverage than other people in the past, in particular Māori and, and women writers who've, who've um, written about values um, and values-based politics. And um, I think that was like a very important critique and, um, and helped me to, um, you know, remember to acknowledge, and as I hope I did in the book, um, yeah, other people uh, who, have, who have written on, on similar topics. Um, and then there was a, yeah, a bunch of other interesting um, perspectives on it. Um, there was an interesting sort of uh, critique from from people who felt there was a need for really radical change. Who I think wondered how much um, sort of language of values could carry us um, to kind of like radical economic change that um, we need in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, and then there was a sort of 
critique from another angle, I think, that said, oh, you know, everyone, everyone agrees with, with these values and, um, uh, you know, left and right and, um, you know, the, the last national league government agrees with these values and you're not, you're not adding much. And again, I, I kind of like welcomed the, the idea that, that everyone could sign up to these values, but I, I didn't really um, buy the fact that everyone um, has been committed um, to at least the values I was talking about in the same way. Um, and yeah, I'm sure there are a bunch of other criticisms that I uh, haven't heard and um, haven't, haven't um, I've got a list right here, but <laughs> we can run through if you like. Like pages no. yeah. I mean, the nice thing about, you know, when you do talks is that people tend to come up to you when they like what you've said, but obviously when people don't like what you've said, they um, are unlikely, um, because people are generally kind to say that, but that means, you know, I'm sure there are other critiques. Um, do it on the internet instead. Yeah, right? exactly. exactly. Yeah. Just all on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and okay, so some of the positives then. What were some of the themes that you felt were really well received, or perhaps this, the same themes, but just the response was different to them? Um, yeah, I think there was a, a real appetite to talk about values and this feeling that um, to some extent values had dropped out of politics in New Zealand, and also that um, uh, in particular that the technocratic politics. Um, had kind of drained away values. When, when I uh, talked about technocratic politics in the book, and I didn't talk about it at very much length, I didn't really expect that phrase to have as much resonance as I felt it did with, with people. Um, and so, yeah, I think there was the sense that like, there, there's been a focus kind of on economic management, on, um, on economics um, as kind of dominant in politics. Uh, and so that, that was like, that was surprising to me, but um, that was heartening. Um, I think uh, some of the specific policy ideas, um, which I, I sort of mentioned early on, um, had, a, had a, a good response. So I, I talked about civics education early on, um, uh, on, on Q&A, and um, there, was, there was a lot of interest in that. Um, uh, a few of the other ideas that I felt people were really interested in were um, climate change displacement, climate change refugees, um, uh, universal basic income, um, prison uh, changes, transformation to, to our prison system and our criminal justice system, um, and a few others. Um, I think this idea of love that in politicals um, written about, and I know you've, you've interviewed um, my friend Philip McKibben, who's done a lot of work on the politics of love. Um, I think uh, a few pe people kind of framed the book as being all about the politics of love, which was interesting because actually it was only really like a small part of one chapter um but i think people were drawn to that idea perhaps because it sounds new and and um and unusual um yeah and yeah there were, i think the, the conversation about decolonization as well in the book um which was um tied in some way to the to the discussion of, of love and aroha and um, i think uh, that was a, a conversation that um uh, a lot of people have have uh, been trying to have for a long time and a lot of Maori have you know worked uh, very hard to try to bring that into um, mainstream consciousness and, and, and I was only writing about it because of those people who I've heard about and um, read but um, I feel like yeah there was um, a bit of a response on that too so yeah there, it's a bit of a ramble sorry but uh, um, I feel yeah. like there was some good good positive engagement too. Yeah well I think um, the decolonization point you raise um, I think in your response to the spin-off critique um you said something about how uh you we weren't expecting uh well you know like it's easy to focus on something like neoliberalism we're a lot more comfortable talking about and bandying that idea around and debating it but what about the more uncomfortable sort of stuff like colonization and unraveling the harm that that's done over time um and i would agree with you on that it's uh, it's a lot easier to kind of uh yeah i don't know I agree, yeah, especially as Pākehā. I had like a few conversations with, um, yeah, with Pākehā early on. I remember one person saying to me, oh, you know, I, I agree with the, the idea behind what you're, you're getting at, but isn't decolonization an ugly word? And I couldn't help but think there was some sense of, you know, discomfort. Um, yeah, and as you say, I feel like um, in some of the early responses to the book, there was this focus on... Um, neoliberalism and what I'd said in the book is we need to 
undo a lot of neoliberalism and also undo a lot of colonization in order to achieve a values-based politics. And yet the focus of the initial response was on undoing neoliberalism um, and, and not so much on, on trying to undo colonization. Yeah, well, I think that and like things like love, uh, you know, it, it does feel like a more ambiguous, vague thing to talk about something like love and then trying to draw that into politics and make it work. And it seems like it's a naive thing, but it doesn't mean it's wrong to try. Um, yeah. And I think it's lazy to just slag that off and not even attempt to go there on the part of people who consider themselves intellectuals, but that's just my yeah. personal take on it. No, but, <laughs> um, but I... It might not yeah. work, but it's worth having a go, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think... Um, a lot of values that we talk about in politics are ambiguous um, and we make them less ambiguous by figuring out what they mean, you know, values like equality and solidarity. Um, and so, yeah, I think there's a lot more work that needs to be done on figuring out what love means in politics and, and whether it's possible to um, realise it through politics. Um, but I think what well, the response showed is that at least people were interested in, in some idea that focused on um, connecting to other people. And to me, um, that's what love is about in part, is a kind of um, uh, recognition that uh, other people are central and um, the need to, to kind of take action and yeah, to act in a way um, that values other people. Um, and I think, yeah, people are keen to explore that angle and some people will use the language of love or aroha and some people might not. Well, you're right. So it's, it's at the end of the day, it's semantic. So what some one person might describe as love might be described by another person as connection or care or yeah. however you want to term it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think we should kind of keep, keep having that conversation. Um, but I think love maybe does um, kind of, um, make people sit up in a slightly different way just because we don't talk about it so much in, in politics. Um, and one interesting response actually out of the book has been from um, people in the kind of art world and art community. And in particular, I found uh, those people are really interested in love uh, in politics. Um, yeah, so a couple of artists who've used bits and pieces of the, the book and then I, I did a, a collaboration with, um, with Simon Denny and Anthony Burt and... Um, it's just been interesting to me to wonder why um, yeah, love has, has resonated in that community in particular. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we'll move on to another point. But um, obviously last year was an election year in New Zealand um, and the outcome of that election ended up very, being very different to what it looked like it was going to be for a while. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on, um, on the coalition government and just in the mania and what's happened so far? Huge question. Um, I, mean, <laughs> um, uh, I hadn't predicted any of it either and I was back in New Zealand when Jacinda Ardern became leader of the Labour Party. I remember talking to a friend and you know not expecting that to happen. It happened so quickly. Um, yeah I mean lots of thoughts. Uh, I, yeah I think that the debate about Jacinda mania and the focus on Jacinda Ardern as a person and was really interesting for me in the lead up to the election because um, I think it showed at, at the most positive level that people were interested in um, uh, someone's ethical compass and someone's personality and how they carry themselves. And to me that, uh, and maybe, you know, I'm biased because of what I'd written on, but to me that, that shows that values matter to people. And um, I think, you know, the focus on personality can go in a, in a very negative direction, but I think there was something legitimate about asking, you know, what is a, what is a leader's values? Who are they? And what can we expect from them in um, the heat of the moment? Um, so that was interesting on the kind of Jacinda mania front. Um, I, I think that um, Jacinda Ardern talked the language of, of values in the campaign and um, talked in particular about empathy, which I think was kind of meeting this need for people to think more beyond themselves and about other people. And I think that that connected with a public increasingly concerned about homelessness, I think, and about inequality and child poverty and other issues. Um, yeah, and I think um, there was a pushback 
for Jacinda Ardern as well. I remember, you know, one of the election debates where Bill English said, um, you can't go shopping with values. And I think it's been actually like a continuing line from the National Party that you can talk vaguely about values, but what's important is, is follow through, which I think is a um, fair point, but also maybe an easy criticism. Um, and that I think, um, yeah, the, the, this government so far has, has actually done quite a lot. And I think anyone that does talk about values also wants to talk about how those values are embodied. Um, in terms of, yeah, thoughts on the new government, I mean, I have, have lots and could talk for, for ages. Um, um, but I think, um, yeah, there have been some really positive steps on, um, on climate change and making that kind of a central part, uh, addressing climate change, including the Pacific kind of central part of um, not just politics, but kind of New Zealand identity again. Um, I think there's been, yeah, some welcome steps on um, social policy. I guess where I think there's a need for more conversation and pressure is around um, both uh, neoliberalism or economics and economic policy and colonisation and um, the ongoing effects of colonisation today. And I think um, on the latter, uh, I think what came out at Waitangi was very positive and, um, and Jacinda Ardern talked about manaakitanga and the importance of it. Um, but I think there's still, you know, quite a bit of concern about what will happen with fresh water and um, whether there's a chance for a constitutional conversation that's on kind of decolonisation area. And then on kind of economic policy, I think um, that still the, the settings from the last government are very much in place. You know, we don't have, uh, we've, we've got a pretty low top rate of tax, 33% compared to 45% in the UK under a conservative government. We don't have an inheritance tax. We've got a kind of limited capital gains tax. And I think it's still really hard to talk about tax or regulation or the role of government. And I think um, that needs to change. And the way to change that partly is by kind of building pressure collectively outside of government um, in order to try to shift the conversation. Um, what do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess my feelings overall are, are positive and I think it's early days so far. You know, it's only been, well, less than six months. So I, I just hope that um, that New Zealand, the New Zealand public gives the current government a chance. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that said, I kind of, I also uh, am wary of populism and I think everyone's fallible and I think it's dangerous to focus on personalities too much. So um, that's my vague answer. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think it's exciting because it, I, well, I was, you know, like I really wasn't expecting um, A, Jacinda to be leader of the Labour Party this time around and B, for the Labour Party to end up in office. So that, that to me was a really positive thing because I have been very kind of, just I don't know I guess disillusioned with previous governments and it does make me feel like what's the point when um you know like I'm I'm aware of a lot of people working really hard in the political space and the social space and everything like that and people who want really good things and who not only have strong values but live by their values and try to practice those values and quite often get you know slammed for doing you know like people don't make it easy um people who don't share those same values and um, yeah, I just, I think that the positive thing about this kind of a government being in place is that there might be more space for the realisation of those things. Yeah. Um, and it's cool to see the Greens in there as well. So, yeah. 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 Okay. And yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing you say that makes me think, you know, yeah, like when Winston Peters made that announcement, I'm sure like, yeah, lots of people, you know, I was like watching it in the UK and was yeah also surprised and, um, yeah, I think there's a real opportunity now. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's sort of up to us, yeah, to try to, to, try to press the government to, to be the best that it can be. Follow through on some stuff. Yeah. Well, I did just see in the news about the Young Labour Party, so I would be remiss not to mention that. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I was following that as well. Yeah, and, um, you know, I think not to um, shy away from the specifics on that, but I think that, it does show something that like lots of people that I know working in the sexual violence space have said for a long time, which is that, you know, New Zealanders like, has a particular problem with 
sexual violence and sexual harassment and I mean the Me Too campaign has kind of put that on the global agenda but I think it, we, we need to grapple with the fact that in New Zealand um, and I think it's a combination it's a cool, it's a product of a combination of things but I think um, yeah we have yeah a, 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 a special problem with with um, sexual violence and, um, and it's right across society and it's important that when these stories come out that we um, take them seriously and um, that's also a bit vague but um yeah yep. yeah um so well, generally speaking then would you say that um with with the current government in place do you feel like your vision for the new zealand project which is pretty broad in scope and um, do you feel like there's more chance for it to be realized yeah yeah i do um uh yeah i think because the government has um yeah i think acknowledge that we need like a correction away from this focus on the self and self-interest um and yeah and i think there is a commitment to, to moving beyond neoliberalism and to, to a different approach um yeah in um politics relating to um history and colonization um but i don't think it's at all inevitable and um yeah i think there are some really big changes that I'd like to see happen. And I think politicians like Nikki Hager told me when I interviewed him for the book, um, they, they respond to pressure in the public. You know, they, um, they can lead conversations. And I think um, there are good people in government at the moment doing that. But I think ultimately it's up to us, yeah, to really, to really push them. Um, and one thing just to kind of extend that point, because I, I did already say something about that, but is a lot of people said when I was back that they felt that New Zealand lacks kind of infrastructure around ideas and campaigning that would make it easier for people to organize and then put pressure on the government. So, you know, we, we don't really have a progressive think tank or a progressive economics think tank. Um, we have a smaller range of media institutions um, that tell a particular a story or present particular angles on stories and I know from political it's created partly to, to address that too um, and you know in, in the area of law where, where I've done some work in the past I think we've got pretty limited um, institutions for supporting kind of law and social justice or public interest law so in all of those spaces you know there are some more levers that um, I think are not easily pulled um, in order to make the government realize values or a vision of, of where New Zealand should go. Mm -hmm. um, what, so are you working on a follow-up to the New Zealand project or have you shifted your focus and your research? What are you working on at the moment? Yeah, so um, I'm uh, finishing this PhD in law on um, abuse of power in, in constitutional law um, and I don't, no, I'm not, don't have a like sequel um, follow up um, <laughs> at all and um, that's <laughs> um, yeah and, and it's um, quite nice uh, to sort of work on something else even though it was you know it's great having the conversations and there are a couple couple more things I've got um, around around the book um, to talk about but um, uh, but yeah so I, I, I'm just working on a few kind of different projects that are probably connected to the to the book. I'm um, gonna do a, a conference on the politics of love in Oxford um, with with um, Philip McKibben. And we're really hoping to invite uh, people from all over the world that have worked on love in different traditions, including Moana Jackson from New Zealand, who's just confirmed. Um, working on um, a piece for a friend of mine who's an artist in Amsterdam, um, Isabel Dreiber, um, on friendship like the politics of friendship and how that kind of connects up to, to some of these themes um, and yeah with um, yeah, a couple of other things I uh, don't want to like ramble but um, well I guess one exciting thing is um, a group of us are trying to um, kickstart like an organization in New Zealand to have conversations about New Zealand's place in the world and um, how we kind of get back to being independent in foreign policy and also really imaginative um, and so, yeah, we're hoping to kind of get that off the ground in the next couple of months. Um, yeah, so it's sort of like a mix of like trying to see how some of those ideas about New Zealand connect up with things in the UK and globally, and then also um, keeping keeping something to Aotearoa. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And hopefully having some time out 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some good sleep snacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much, man. Really yeah. appreciate it. No, thanks for your interest. And in, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I was going to say earlier, I think there's like a broad group of people interested in like values and policy. And I think sort of in political has done a lot of work around that um, and talking about values. And yeah, I think it's great the work you're doing. So yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah.